Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 13. We've been waiting for this since June, it's finally here, and many of you have been waiting for this since last September. So you can download this on any supported device, so that means iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, SE and newer, or iPad Air 2 and newer, or iPad mini four and newer or iPod touch seventh generation. So it's available now, just go to your software updates and check for it. Now, this particular update is fairly large, depending on the device up to four gigabytes. So it will take some time to download and install, but there's a lot of changes. Some are big, some are small, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, if you don't have iOS 13 yet, or you're not showing it on one of the supported devices, you can check manually by going to settings, then going to general, and then going to software update and under software update, you should see the update. Now you will need Wi-Fi in order to install it. And if you're running one of the iOS 13 betas, such as iOS 13.1, you will not be able to install it and you won't see it without using iTunes. So you'll actually have to use iTunes if you are on a beta that's newer than iOS 13 to go back to this version. So just keep that in mind. Now with this particular update, there are a lot of changes, some big, some small. And the first one is faster performance for face ID. So if you have a supported face ID device, it's faster. If you have the first generation face ID, such as the iPhone 10, it's also faster. So it unlocks very quickly and it's up to 50% faster according to Apple. And that seems about right. Now, the other advantage you get is faster app launching, such as the app store. You can open apps much quicker. Also, the size of them is smaller as well. So the size of apps has decreased by about 50% for many of them. Once you install iOS 13 and you'll get better storage. And the only other change with the app store is you have arcade down here at the bottom, and this may be available right now for you, or maybe a little bit later. And then also to check for your updates, tap your new icon here in the upper right and then down just a little bit you'll see updates so if you have any updates they'll show up here so that's it for the app store now dark mode is one of the features a lot of people have been waiting for and that can be seen in settings and then you go to display and brightness and then you'll have light and dark and i actually have this set to change based on sunset you can actually set up a time but right now it's based on sunset and it will switch to dark mode depending on the time of day. So it's a really nice feature and it's, it makes it a little bit easier to read the display at night. Now you can also add dark mode to the control center to have a little custom toggle as well. So if you go into your control center settings under general, you'll be able to see those there. Now the next new feature is the quick path keyboard. And this is a new keyboard that allows you to swipe while typing. If we go into notes, we can say, hi, how are you today? And you'll see, I just swiped to do that. And it's really simple. It's very similar to swipe or the G board. If you're using that or any others that have been around for a while, it's only available for some languages though. It's available for English, German, Portuguese, simplified Chinese, Italian, Spanish, and French. This can be updated in the future, but right now that's what it's available for. Now, another new feature has to do with battery health. And this is a great feature that really keeps you from having to manage your battery. And like I've said in the past, I charge up to 100% every night. And this helps you do that under battery health. You'll see here we have optimized battery charging. This is a new setting that what it does is if you put your phone on the charger at night, it charges it up to 80% and holds it there until it gets closer to the time you normally wake up. So based on a schedule that maybe you set with the bedtime app in the clock, or maybe based on uh, when you normally wake up and it sees the phone wake up itself, it will charge it up to 80%, get it ready up to 100% by the time you wake up and you're good to go. It's better to keep the battery a little bit lower than full charge all the time. So it does that longer to extend your battery health. Now there are new icons all over the place. They've made little refinements and tweaks to everything, but that's not the bigger change. They've made changes to volume, which a lot of people appreciate. If you hit the volume button here, you'll see volume is a little bit different. It gets large and then shrinks. They've also changed the silent switch so that when you silence it, it's got a little new animation here at the top. So it looks pretty good as well. There's also a new share sheet. So maybe you're on a website and you want to share with someone. You'll see here's an article from my website. What it does is when you share here, 
not only does it give you your top suggestions, you also have options to copy. They've grouped these into separate sections, and then you can modify these groups to customize them to however you'd like. So you can edit these actions and move them around to make it more convenient for you when you're using the share sheet. I think it's a great addition and I've actually gotten really used to this and I didn't like it at first, but I grew to really like it a lot. Now, when it comes to 3d touch or haptic touch, they've changed this as well. And this is a little bit different. Now, if you want to rearrange your apps, you can either 3d touch or haptic touch or long press, and you have the option to rearrange apps. That's a quick way to let you delete different apps. Also, you can press and hold and keep holding and you'll get the same thing. Or you can press and hold and then just move it around. So it's changed a little bit and it's more confusing if you want to delete or move apps around, but the change is across everything. So even haptic touch devices or older devices that don't even have haptic touch, such as the iPhone SE will get that feature as well. Now there's some new changes with 3d touch that's in the control center or haptic touch. And if you 3d or long press touch on the, the wireless options here, you can now go into your Wi-Fi and select a different network more quickly. You can also do the same with Bluetooth or you can turn it off from here for the day. So it's just a couple extra options that are there. And then also if we go home, you'll see there's some new gestures that they've added as well. So if I go into notes now, when you're selecting text, it's a little bit different now as well. They've refined this and you can move your finger out of the way. So your finger no longer covers what you're trying to select. So that's really nice. You can select text of course, and then you can pinch to copy. And this is a little bit harder to do. I don't recommend doing this. I just like to tap and copy, but you can pinch to copy. You can unpinch to, paste and then you can pinch twice to cut. So those are a little bit hard to do. I prefer just touching, selecting what I want, copying, cutting, or pasting that way, but you can use those new gestures to do that. Now there's also a new gesture to undo. So you can type and say, hi, then swipe with three fingers to redo or swipe the other direction to undo. So you'll see I'm redoing undoing. And so you can do that and it works pretty well. Uh, and I've gotten used to it works better on an iPad as well. Also, you can hold three fingers or tap to get a couple different extra menus here at the top. So that's all new in this particular version. Now the phone app has not changed at all. When you receive a call, it will take up the entire display and you can double click the power button to make it go away, but it still takes up the display, but they did change one thing. That's nice. And if we go into settings and then we go down to wherever phone is here, if we scroll down, we can now silence unknown callers. So if we have people calling us spam calls, things like that, it will silence those. They won't even show up on your phone. So that's really nice. And it's something I normally leave on all the time. Now in the clock app, they've changed bedtime. So if you go into bedtime and you want to set this up, say 7am is when we wake next, we'll go to bed at 11. That's fine. They've changed this a little bit so that when you have your schedule, it's on a different page now with where you can adjust it. So it's nothing major, but they have changed it a little bit. Shortcuts is now installed by default on all iOS 13 devices and shortcuts get some enhancements such as supporting third party apps. And also there's an automation feature that will be coming with iOS 13.1. So this can support third party apps that can integrate directly with shortcuts. So you get a lot more options now going forward, as long as a developer allows it. Now, Siri also gets some major enhancements as far as the voice and what it can do. The voice is much better. It uses the neural engine for more realistic sounds. So take a listen here. Read me a story, please. One lovely day, Siri got a job as a personal assistant at Apple, and that was very exciting. People said, oh, Siri. You're so, so it does get better over time. Sometimes Siri sounds amazing. Sometimes it sounds the same, but there are pauses and things that make it more human. Like now there's a feature that I'm fairly excited about, but we haven't really seen much about, and that is fonts. If we go into settings and then we go down to general, and then we go to fonts, you'll be able to install fonts here using the app store. So you can install new fonts. They can be system fonts used throughout and across the entire device. So I'm really excited for that as well. 
Now we've also got new support for Xbox One S, Xbox One X, and PS4 controller support. So that's really nice. I have a separate video on that. Now aside from the game controller support, we get mouse support. So you can even use your magic mouse or whatever you have. And I have a separate video on how to set that up as well. But you can go into settings and then you go to accessibility. Then you go down to touch then assistive touch and we scroll down and you'll see devices, mouse keys, pointer style. So you can change anything you want, use a mouse and it's, it's really nice, especially on an iPad messages gets updated. And if you go into messages and you pull down, you now have search where you can use your voice to text search, but the search is so much better. You can search for whatever you want and it will actually find it. So if I search for iPhone, it finds the conversation and then finds it down at the bottom and shows me where it's at. So it actually works this time around and it works very well. Now there's also some enhancements here. You can see I have my little icon there and this can be set by tapping these three dots and then editing your name and photo and your name and photo can be shared with your contacts or just have someone ask every time, or you don't have to share it at all. Now you don't have to use your, your Memoji. You can use whatever you'd like, but you can share whatever you want to share with your contacts. So it's much more like WhatsApp that way. Now, the other thing we have is if we tap the three dots, we can manage message lists and delete them individually. The whole messages, we can swipe the swipe them off the display to do the same thing, or we can hide the alerts that way. However, if we go into one of the messages, so we'll go here. And then if we tap and hold or 3d press on one of the messages, we hit more and now we can delete them individually. So you can go in and delete each of them or hit delete all and it will delete all of the comments. Now we have some updates to Memoji and Animoji. So down here at the bottom, you'll see the keyboard's a little bit different. We have a dedicated emoji button, but this emoji button does not go away just when you add multiple keyboards. So if you have different languages installed, it doesn't go away. You still have a dedicated emoji button. We also have some new Animoji. So you'll see there's a few new ones at the top here of a little octopus just a few different things that you'll probably like. And then also with Animoji and Memoji, we get stickers that it creates by itself. So if we created our own Memoji, you'll see there's different stickers with different, uh, different emotions and things like that. We also have the addition of hairstyles, headwear, makeup, and piercings added to Animoji or Memoji as well. So we have all of those things that if you use these features, you'll be pretty happy with them. And finally, if we go back to one of the messages and go to this one here, and then we tap our name at the top and hit I, not only will it show a contact card, but it will show you all of your different photos. And then you can see all photos or any links that were shared will show up here as well. So you've got a lot more information. It's easily searchable and much, much better. Now music gets a small update that reminds me more of the Steve jobs era. And that's if we go into music and we play a song, I have the volume muted, but if we were playing a song and we have this icon down here in the bottom left, we tap on this and you can scroll through the lyrics and jump around based on the lyrics, but it also plays them back in real time. This is one of my favorite features when the song supports it, because I used to look at lyrics a lot and I really like this. It just reminds me much more of, when Apple was focused on music and small details. Now we do have up next lists. So since we're playing this, we hit the bottom right icon shows us what's playing up next. And then also if we tap and hold on a song, we can add that to next. So if you haven't seen play next, it's here. Now, another update you get is you can pair AirPods or power beats pro at the same time. So you can go into your control center, maybe 3d press or long press on your music, tap the little, airplay music icon and then tap on say airpods and then power beats pro it'll take just a moment to connect and it will connect to both and play in both and then you can control the volumes individually between the two devices so you can slide these up or down and you'll see that you can control them independently so that's a new feature as well also when both are connected you'll have a little icon here next to your volume so if you 3d press or touch the volume, you can slide that up and down here for the volume control photos gets a major update. So if I go into photos, it's got a complete redesign. It's by year. If I pinch into the year, it shows the month pinch again, you'll see the days 
pinch again, we can get the photo itself. And then we can reverse that just by pinching out. It's very, very nice and something I really like. You've got years, months, days, all photos at the bottom and videos play in real time. Now, if we go to the for you tab, you'll see that we have featured photos. And then up here, we actually have trips that it's put together. If I go into one of those trips, you'll see this was my CES trip to Las Vegas. You've got different photos in here and the videos will start playing back in real time as I scroll through them. It's just a nicer way to see everything and it's doing this privately. It's not sharing this information, but it's very much like Google photos this way. There are a lot more editing options as well. So if I go into a photo here and then I go to edit, the editor is all new. So you'll see it's downloading the photo. It may take a moment. Now you'll see we have a bunch of options at the bottom. We can completely customize this with everything from exposure to highlights to black point to warmth, sharpness, definition, vignette. And we have a lot more options to actually edit our photo here without going to a separate app to do that. Now, the great thing is we can do the same thing with video. So if I go into a video here again, this will take a second to download. It's on iCloud. You'll see, we can edit the video. If I tap a few things here, such as crop, we can move this around. We've got different features such as original. And again, we've got all the same exposure controls and everything for video in real time. It will save it and we can make it exactly how we want. So it's really nice, very comprehensive and a huge update to photos. Now they've also added one feature to camera. So if your phone supports it, you'll have this. Now you have to have a 10 R or newer. So a 10 S 10 S max 10 R or the new iPhone 11 series. So you'll go into camera, then go to portrait mode, flip it to the selfie camera. And at the end you have high key light mono. So you'll see it looks a little different. I don't know that I'd ever use this, but we have it as an option. It's not on older devices, so you won't have it on the 6S Plus or the iPhone 10, for example. Find My Friends and Find My iPhone have now been combined into a singular app called Find My. So now not only can you find your devices, but you can also find your friends in the same app. And then we have some options under me. Now under this menu here under me now under the me tab, we have my location, share my location, allow a friend request, receive location updates, edit location name. And then at the bottom, we can help a friend. So maybe a friend lost their device. We can now sign in here and locate your device. And there's new technology in the background that helps you locate your device even better. So if you have Bluetooth on, it can actually relay its location. Even when it's powered off at times with some of the newer devices, it can reload relay its last location through a nearby Apple device. So maybe it's lost in another country. Someone walks near it with an iPhone. It can relay its location from your device securely and anonymously through that iPhone or iPad back to Apple and then back to you. So it's really interesting technology. We should see more of this in the future. Also with devices, there's supposed to be a new tile like device that will help you locate things like backpacks or, or something along those lines. We haven't seen that yet, but supposedly it will be included with the iPhone with the find my app. Now maps gets a complete redesign. They've rethought it from the ground up. It looks a lot different and has a lot more detail on each city that you're looking at or each location. So if we zoom in here, you'll see, we have road closures. We can get information about that. We have our air quality index. We can 3d press or long press and get the weather. And also we have a lot more information. So if we scroll up, you'll see you have your home, you have work, you have collections. So maybe you're going on a trip. You can add a location add a bunch of them you'd like to see in a collection. And then we have recently viewed. So we have more information here. So if we go to a place like Apple park, for example, the Apple campus, if we scroll up, we've got how far it is from where I'm located. We can get directions. We've got photos, Wikipedia articles, the phone number and on and on. We can add it to favorites, create a new contact. And then if we go to this location and zoom in, maybe we'll go to a nearby road, zoom in, we have binoculars and this is called look around. It's very similar to Google street view, but much better. You'll see, we can turn the phone. It will give us the direction we're turning in. And then if we look around, it's very, very smooth. If I want to go to the next location. So the animations much smoother than you see on Google. And hopefully this will be updated with some regularity, but overall it's very, very nice. And I think it's an, it's something that people will actually start using as opposed to Google maps because it's much more private.
Now notes gets a small update. So if we go into notes, you'll see here's a note. And then we have these four dots in the upper left. We tap on those and we have a new tile view. We can also search notes very similar to how we have in messages and it works quite well. And then also if we go into this note, and tap to type, we have some options down here at the bottom. And this is the quick toolbar. So we can change everything from our font size, our fonts, our subtitle heading, maybe the actual new fonts that we install later on, but you've just got more customization. You can create check boxes and tables and mark up whatever you want to do. It's just a much nicer interface and just continues to make notes more useful. Now, one more thing that actually gets a complete overhaul is reminders. Reminders is all new. It works with dark mode. Also, you'll see, I have a reminder in here. It looks a little different. We can have flagged and schedules, and it tries to organize it using artificial intelligence or machine learning to help make what's more a priority at the top. So I haven't really seen a whole lot of this. I don't use reminders a whole lot in general, but overall it's a nicer look. It's simpler to use. And I know other people that use it that really, really like it compared to the previous version. Now Safari gets a few updates. So if we go into Safari, you'll see it has a new home screen. And then if I go to my website here, we've got a couple new options. So the article on how to use multiple wireless headphones with an iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch, which is a new feature in iOS 13. Uh, if I hold or 3d press on the title, we have some options. We could download a linked file. We could also hide the link preview. So if we don't want to see a preview of that, it just shows us the link. Now we can do that. And this is individual to each page that's opened. The preferences stay as far as the privacy and everything else stay with the page itself, not with Safari as a whole. So that's nice. And then we can download linked file. And if we download it, you see, we now have a download manager in the upper right. So now we have a little arrow. We can tap on this. And if we hit the little search icon, we can go into the new files app and the new files app has been revamped to include things like servers. You can set up a server. Now, if we tap these three dots in the upper right, we can scan documents, connect to server and files also allows you to create folders within folders as well. Now there's an additional feature in Safari. So if we go into Safari and we take a screenshot, go into the screenshot, at the top, it now says full page. We have full page screenshots so we can share the entire page. Maybe it's 13 pages long. We can share it, mark it up, correct it, whatever you want to do, uh, even crop it, share some of it, whatever you want. You can have all of these pages on one photo that gets saved to photos. Now mail also gets a little bit of an update. It has a lot of features that we haven't seen before in mail, but in some other email apps. So if we go into this email here about airmail, which is also a great email app, and then you can see in the bottom, right, this is where we have our trash and our reply button. Now, if we hit reply, we now have some new flags and different colors. We can also mute the email or have it notify you regularly. So that part's nice. But my favorite thing is if we hit edit in the upper right, when we're on the main screen, tap one of the emails and then scroll your finger up or down, you can quickly select or deselect email. Now you can also select all in the upper left and delete everything if you'd like to do that. So there's a lot of little tweaks and changes that are nice. Also, if we swipe to the right, we have more options for flag and also for our ar archive or unread. So it just depends what you have turned on. You'll see there, if you have archive set as default, you'll see archive. So it's got a lot of little enhancements that I have wanted to see for years that have finally shown up with mail home gets an update, but it's very minor. You have some additional wallpaper in the background for the home app itself. And then aside from that, you also have the option to use an end to end encrypted video cameras that will only allow you to see your video stream on your device. No one else can view it. So it's completely encrypted. I haven't seen one of these cameras yet, but the option is there and more device support as well. Now there's a very significant new feature called sign in with Apple and sign in with Apple is similar to sign in with Facebook and Google, but it doesn't share your information with anyone. 
and very few apps have this so far, but if we go into kayak, this is an app that has added it. So you'll see it says sign in with Apple. And when you sign in with Apple, you don't have to share any information, including your email with them. So if you hit sign in with Apple, now you'll see it says at the bottom, share my email or hide my email. And this is great because it completely makes you anonymous. If you don't want people knowing your information, Apple will still relay messages to you if you want them, but they don't know your email address, at least the app that you're signing into. Now there are some more changes to the health app. The health app gets revamped and you'll see it says share my data with Apple or not. And there's health categories that are new, such as cycle tracking and hearing. There's more information that can be kept in here. You'll see different sleep information. If you want, whatever you want to put in there, you can now, and it's completely anonymous like it was before. Activity also gets updated with activity trends. So trends will keep track of how you're doing with moving and exercise and standing and the distance you're going. And you'll see, I'm, it's not very good right now because I don't have this Apple watch attached to this phone. So you're not seeing anything, but it will give you some information and then try and encourage you to do more as far as activity is concerned. Now there is a major Apple CarPlay update. I have a separate video for that, so I'll link that as well. But if you want to see the CarPlay update, it's pretty significant and comprehensive from everything from calendar to uh, the way music is presented. So be sure to check that out. And then calendar now allows you to add attachments. So if you have calendar attachments, you want to share with someone, that's one of the updates. It's the only update to calendar. Also books has a small update. And books now allows you to add reading goals. So maybe you want to read three hours a day or 10 minutes a day. You can set a reading goal for that as well. Now there's a major feature that I think a lot of people are overlooking and it's called voice control. It's under settings under accessibility and it's called voice control under physical and motor control. And this is for people that can't interact well with their phone. Maybe you have problems touching an icon or maybe you just need a little extra help or maybe you can't use your limbs altogether. So if you go into voice control and you turn it on, you'll see a little icon in the upper left when it's active. And when it's active, you can use your voice to tell it what you want to do on your phone or iPad or even Mac when that comes out, go home and you'll see it went home, open settings, and you'll see it opened settings. You can use this to correct text. You can use this to type anything you want to do. We'll turn it back off, but you could use it to send an email or messages or anything you'd like. And it works incredibly well. You can change the vocabulary. You can add different sayings that you want to do certain things such as customize commands. So you can change this a lot. And I think it's a big help to those that need a little extra help. And it's one of my favorite features that they've added this. Now also we get better language support better support for India and China, more specifically India. There's a lot of changes and updates for India, which is great. And also 38 new keyboard languages. Finally, there are AR kit improvements or augmented reality. And what the improvements do with AR kit three is better detect objects in front and behind. So maybe you have a table you're placing down because you're trying to figure out new furniture with the Ikea app. You put that table down and maybe someone's standing behind it. It will better interpret the person behind it and then the person in front of it at the same time. So there's just a augmented reality updates. And I think that's pretty significant, especially if they're working on augmented reality glasses. There are more small changes than I've just mentioned, but over 200 changes overall. That's quite a big change to iOS. Even though some people see this as a small update, it's not as small as you think, even though the interface doesn't look terribly different, there's a ton done in the background to improve everything from performance to features. So that's it for iOS 13. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And also Apple's releasing iOS 13.1 on September 30th. So we'll have a new update with a few more features that were left out of this current version. We'll have that in a few more days or another week or so, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, I'll link the wallpaper used in the video in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Like, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.